Right, welcome to today's Scratch lesson. I would advise all learners who haven't yet set up a Scratch account to log into the appropriate website and set up an account. And I'll just show you how you do that. Here you'll see Scratch Imagine Program Share. And Scratch is run by MIT, which is a very well-known university, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And somewhere along the line, you're going to find that it will say join or set up an account. Now, I've already set up an account. You can ask me to help you if you're really stuck. So you'll see I've already got my stuff over here. But you'll have to look around. You'll see it will say start a Scratch account, account or join. And that's what you're going to need to do. Now, when you want to start and you've joined and you've set up a Scratch account, you go to create to make your first program. And you'll see when you open it up, you're going to get into the area where programs are made. And you'll see that there's little blocks that one uses to create the logic to make the, the lines of code that makes your program work. And here you've got a little sprite. This is called a sprite. And the sprite is found on a stage that's called the backdrop or the stage. And this is where the sprite moves around in this area. So the sprite is moving around in the stage area. That's important that you understand the sprite. And you can even name your sprite. And you can see that I, my sprite is active over here. If I click on it, it's active, showing that the code, whatever I put in the code section, which is this area over here, is linked up with this particular sprite. If we had to go over here and put events, that's the flag event. Just make everything bigger. If I click on the flag, something's going to happen to the sprite. So the sprite will do something. It's called an event, a click event. Whenever I click on that flag, something will happen. My sprite will do something. It's very important that you have a backdrop, that your stage area is given a backdrop where your program will be more lifelike. And there's this backdrop. So you click over here. And you've got a whole range of different backdrops that you can use. There's fantasy, music, sports, outdoors, indoors, space. Let's go with space. And you can choose one of them. And that will be the background in which your sprite will be moving. So probably I could change my sprite to be a rocket in this particular case. Now, when you activate your code, you'll see that your code is with these categories over here, the coding blocks. So you see one of the first blocks I've used is the when the flag is clicked. When the flag is clicked, something happens. So these are all called coding blocks. And you can see there's motion. These all deal with the object doing something. So if I had to say turn 15 degrees and I click on my flag, watch my sprite is turned 15 degrees. So that is motion. If I Press it again, you can see it's turning 15 degrees and then the code stops. So you need to create a continuity, a loop that goes round and round and round that continues to bring that 15 degree turn in if you want to keep it going forever. So if I bring in, let's bring in a repeat, if it's going to go 10, 15 degree turns. So if I take and put that code in there, that means it's going to read the first time. It'll read, you'll turn 15 degrees. Then it'll go back to the beginning, and the second time it will turn 15 degrees, and it'll keep doing that for 10 turns. So it's repeating 10 times. Let's test that out, and I'm going to make this rather large, and you can see it a bit better. Click on it, and that was 10 15 degree turns. So if I go like that, that's another 10 15 degree turns. And you can see if I change this to 20, you'll find that there will be 20 degree, 20. 15 degree turns. I could slow everything down and bring in a weight of one second. So we're making every 15 degree, degree turns, it's going to go one second. So I'll change this back to 10 and we make it bigger and press that. And you'll see one second, look, it's changed 15 degrees, 15 degrees, 15 degrees. And that's turning at the same speed as a clock would turn. Because remember, it's one second, the hand, the second hand would move like that. So we have the beginnings of making a clock in this simple example. So if I go back, I can bring in further code. So we just to go back, this is the control codes. And 
you use these to create certain logic like for example this one says if something happens then do something else if okay so that's the if then control so we got in our coding area here we've got a repeat loop that waits one second then turns 15 uh, 15 degrees now we don't want to have a turning repeating 10 times if we were making a clock we would need it to continue forever um, the forever loop would apply in that case so you've got a forever loop it go round and round continuously forever so if we go like that and we pressed our flag you can see our clock and i use the word clock because it's moving as a clock would move our scratch cat is moving round and round as a clock would move the second hand of a clock so look at that and this would continue endlessly it would go on forever our sprite is moving as a clock in terms of time but not in terms of the amount of degrees we've learned that we've got this backdrop and we learned about a forever loop and we also had the repeat loop which we had 10 and 20 times it was running let's have a look at the different sections that we have over here incidentally this is a trigger and when you click on it the green flag the sprite which is our cat then does something so there's lots of things that our cat can do he can move and you can see like there's certain he can change on the x-axis and this is the x-axis that way the y-axis going up and down x-axis is going from this side the left to the right and the that's going up and down is the y-axis and we can get our scratch cat to point in the direction of like for example here it says point in the direction of the mouse pointer so if I move this around it's going to point in the direction of the mouse pointer let's just have a look and look over there if I move my mouse pointer over there every one second it moves to face the direction of the mouse pointer we could take away that one second and it'll be instantaneously looking at the mouse pointer so you can see it's much faster and look over there you can move your mouse pointer and that's happening so every single the act the start of the code would be with the click event and we learned a little bit about that in purple mash as well there's lots of very interesting things now i wanted to just before we end today's lesson just to show you we're going to build a little bit of a program and i'm going to go to the motion part and i just wanted to show you that when you scroll down over here you can see you can scroll down and you don't need to actually click on the various categories you can just scroll down and find what you're looking for now i'm going to look for the ask with the asking of a question which will have an answer whenever you ask a question you're going to get an answer so if i go to this part over here and you can see it's in the sensing part it's in the sensing part of scratch i'm going to ask a question i'm going to ask something i'm going to say what do you want do you want to translate to zulu mrs kamala would be very happy to know that this is something that learners can make a zulu translator so first of all the code's going to ask when we click on it let's just show how it works click on it what do you want to translate into zulu it's he's still at upside down but that doesn't matter and i would say a uh, cat and then as we type that in the answer what we typed in a cat would then be translated into zulu which we haven't put into the code yet so what do you want to translate into zulu and then we're going to say we are going to say what has been translated into zulu so when you go onto the looking part looks we'll say something so let's go to say and we're going to then bring whatever is said translated into Zulu. The answer will then be translated. Whatever we typed in will be translated into the Zulu language. And you look over here, it says Google Translate. There's the translating ability. And if you go over here, it says translate a word, something to Danish. By We're going to change that Danish to be Zulu. And we're going to just scroll down and look for Zulu. There it is, right at the bottom click on there and we'll just bring that in and we'll put it over there and we're going to change what must be translated we don't want hello to be translated we want whatever answer was typed in must be translated so we're going to look for the answer and you see over here here's a variable 
meaning answer. And answer is whatever we typed in when we asked, what do you want to translate to Zulu? Whatever we decided to translate into Zulu. And we're going to translate whatever you into Zulu, eight seconds. So whatever is, is translated into Zulu must be shown for eight seconds. And then we'll move on into the code. So we're going to move on in the code and we'll bring in a wait into this. And that would be in the control section, we'll wait another two seconds before we ask the next question. Let's make it four seconds. Let's test this and see if it works. So we click on the flag. What do you want to translate into Zulu? And I'm going to go, how are you, comma, my good friend? And we'll see how this translates into Zulu. Press on that. And it says, ungubani mgani wami umuhle. So the actual saying of this is not shown, but it can create that the certain languages would be said. You can actually have that they would be spoken in the actual languages. And we yet to we have yet to get that in Zulu. So let's just go through this code again. We've got a forever loop. When we click on the flag, we ask a question. Now, whenever we ask this question in the this grayish part, that's in the sensing part, we ask a question, there will always be this input box at the bottom over here where you would put your answer in. And the answer is a variable. And now we're going to say whatever the answer is in Zulu. And it will be shown for eight seconds. And then we're going to wait four seconds. And then it's going to ask, what do you want to translate into Zulu again? And it'll just go. What we have done now, and I'll do this little scratch cat in this funny way is, is just a bit awkward. So let's just see if we can get a different sprite and bring that in so that we can make changes. So let's... If we we have this individual is going to be tr our translator, our sprite. A little bit more appropriate than the scratch cat. So if we take this, and I think this is going to work. I haven't tested this out. But if I take that and I bring it to my, uh, this called Abby. Let's have a look at the code in Abby. She's now got this code. And I'm going to re re take away my scratch cat. And I think she's a little bit more appropriate standing there in space and she's going to be translating into Zulu. So let's see if that works. It looks a little better. And we click on that. What do you want to translate into Zulu? My family are having a party and we press the tick and and there we have what has been translated into Zulu. Please, boys and girls, do show this to Mrs. Kamalu, especially if you do create and make your own uh, Zulu translator. Thank you for today's lesson. Today being the second, the first one, we had a very informal lesson, and this one is the first that is being presented on YouTube. And we urge you to try to get as many people to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we want to develop and promote computer coding in all schools, not only in our school. And thank you so much for being here today in this lesson. And we appreciate your input. I'm just going to leave it on the code so that you can all copy that into your coding sections. And you have made this wonderful translator that translates into Zulu using the on-click flag event with a forever loop continuously going on putting it into Zulu and in one of the next lessons I'll show you how to put whatever was translated into a list so that you have the computer remembering what was translated to Zulu thank you